Floca Bangmark Nasal Intestinal Tube. The Floca Bangmark Nasal Intestinal Tube is intended for transnasal feeding directly into the duodenum or jejunum. This tube is indicated for all patients who have a functioning intestinal tract with impaired stomach motility and or increased risk of aspiration. This is frequently the case in the early post-operative period. Early post-operative intestinal tube feeding reduces the risk of atrophy of the small intestine and reduces the risk of bacterial translocation. If there is stomach motility, the tube can be placed in the stomach. The Bengmark spiral will spontaneously pass the pylorus within 8 to 12 hours. If there is limited or no stomach motility, the tube can be passed through the pylorus with help of alternative techniques, such as endoscopy or fluoroscopy. Alternatively, the gastric motility can be improved by means of medication. Product Description The Flocar Bangmark Nasal Intestinal Tube has the following characteristics. White, full opaque polyurethane tubing. Length, 145 cm. Bullet tip with two lateral outlets and hydroma coating, which lubricates the tip after submerging it in water. The patented Bengmark spiral, consisting of 2.5 loops with a diameter of approximately 3 cm and a length of approximately 23 cm. These loops are straightened with a guide wire during insertion. After removal of the guide wire, the spiral eases transpyloric passage together with stomach motility and allows optimal stable positioning of the tube in the small intestine and a pre-lubricated metallic guide wire partially introduced into the tube. The Bengmar tube is available in Charrières 8 and 10. Preparation Prepare the following materials required for placement of the Bengmark nasal intestinal tube. Flowcare Bengmark nasal intestinal tube Hypoallergenic tape, 50 ml syringe connecting with the tube, small container with water to moisten the tube, tape or a marker to mark the correct placement of the tube, gloves, small towel. Handkerchief, glass of water. Wash your hands and or wear surgical gloves. Placement for patients with stomach motility. Advise the patient of the placement procedure. Fully insert the guide wire in the tube and ensure that it is firmly attached to the connector. Place the patient in a comfortable sitting or semi-recumbent position. To determine the length of the Bengmark tube to be inserted, measure the distance from the xiphoid process of the sternum to the tip of the nose and then to the ear. Mark the tube at this point. Make two additional marks at 25 cm and at 50 cm after the first mark, closer to the feeding connector. Submerge the tip of the tube into the container with water. This will facilitate the introduction of the tube. Ask the patient to blow his nose. Choose the nostril through which the patient breathes most easily. Ask the patient to bend his head backwards and introduce the tube into the chosen nostril.
ask the patient to bend forward as soon as he feels the tube in his throat. Advance the tube further and ask the patient to swallow the tube further down, potentially by drinking small sips of water. Let the patient sigh deeply to prevent retching. Introduce the tube further until the first mark reaches the nose. Subsequently, check if the Bengmark tube is adequately placed in the stomach through aspiration of gastric contents. Measure the pH value of the gastric contents using pH paper. The tube is correctly placed in the stomach if the pH value is below 5.5. If the measured pH value is higher than 5.5, the appropriate tube placement needs to be confirmed through X-ray. The tube is fully radio-opaque. Note the pH value in the patient's medical chart. After assessing that the tube's placement is correct, inject 20 to 40 milliliters of water into the tube. Pull circa 25 centimeters of guide wire out of the tube. Subsequently, continue inserting the tube until you reach the second mark. Now pull the guide wire out of the tube completely. Do not yet secure the tube to the nose. Use the earlobe as a temporary fixation point. Within 8 to 12 hours, gastric motility will have moved the tube past the pylorus. Secure the tube once the third mark on the tube has reached the patient's nose. Before administrating any enteral nutrition, check if the tube is positioned correctly by X-ray. If possible, give the patient something to drink or to eat to stimulate the migration of the tube. If the tube is required for pediatric use, the tube length can easily be reduced following tube insertion by cutting off the tube at the length required and placing a new Flowcare feeding connector with the same charriere size. Care Work hygienically and aseptically. Care of the nose and mouth are very important. Change the hypoallergenic tape that fixes the tube daily. Clean the skin thoroughly. If the skin under the tape is damaged, remove the tube and place a new tube in the other nostril. Take good care of the damaged skin. Ask the patient to blow their nose on a regular basis. If this is impossible, clean the nose with saline. Even if the patient is not able to eat, it is very important to take good care of the mouth, teeth and lips. Check the placement of the tube prior to feeding and at least three times a day. When in doubt, use x-ray to check the position. Flush the tube with 20 to 40 milliliters of water before and after administration of feed or medication and at least every 8 hours. If the tube does get blocked, flush the tube with lukewarm water. Do not use excessive pressure to prevent tube rupture. Use a syringe larger than 20 mil. If this does not resolve the blockage, gently squeeze the tube between your fingers along the length of the tube. Do not use any other fluids to flush the tube. Never reinsert a guide wire to solve tube blockage, as this may cause perforation of the gastrointestinal tract. If the tube clogging is not resolved, remove the tube and place a new one. The Flocare Bangmark nasal intestinal tube can stay in situ for six weeks. Always use an enteral feeding pump to control the flow rate when delivering feed in the small intestine. Please read the instructions for use on the packaging and guidelines. 
immediately stop feeding and ask for medical help when there are doubts about the patient's medical condition. For example, shortness of breath or abdominal pain.